So, we start from where we left, uh, we are in the process of finding out the power output of a laser. Uh, we also want to find out the modulation bandwidth of the laser because we claim that the laser is supposed to have a higher modulation bandwidth when compared to LED. So, we wrote down the rate equations and there are two rate equations we wrote, one is for the uh, carrier density and the other one is for P and P represents photon density, number of photons per unit volume. Okay. And we claim that in steady state there should not be a continuous change, so dp by dt must be equal to 0, dn by dt must be equal to 0. And dp by dt equation gave us this which said that if you just solve this is equal to 0, you get this is Rsp by 1 by tau p minus g. And what is interesting to observe here is that as your injection current increases, as your j increases, your n increases and when your n increases, your g increases and when g increases, it starts from 0 and it starts increasing and as your g increases, there could be a point, there could be an injection current for which this g becomes equal to tau p and when if that condition is achieved, it means that you should have infinite photons coming out of the system and that is not physically feasible. So, you always say that this g or this n in the system is clamped at some value which is slightly lower than such that g is slightly lower than 1 by tau p. Okay. So, that is the threshold condition and at threshold condition we said 1 by tau p minus g, g is this was the definition and the n at threshold is what we are representing as nth which is the excess carrier density at threshold uh, condition and this nth now we can derive that it is equal to n naught, n naught was a carrier density which was required for achieving transparency which was required such that those recombinations will overcome the loss of the system. Okay, so, n naught plus 1 over uh, gamma which was the confinement factor, v g which is a group velocity, a is that gain constant and tau p which is the photon lifetime. Right? So, just a numerical uh, algebraic substitution gave us that the nth is equal to this, but the thing to remember is that will n ever reach exactly nth? If n reaches nth, it means that g becomes equal to 1 by tau p and that is not physically feasible. So, in the system, n is always slightly smaller than nth, right? And uh, uh, because for a positive p, g should be less than 1 by tau p, n should be less than nth for a positive uh, p. Not just for positive p, not to, to kind of making to, to ensure that the system is stable. So, the to, to kind of recap, what we are saying is as j increases, the carrier density increases, this increases the photon density and as the photon density increases, so initially the photon density was uh, small enough so that this gp was not very, very significant. The primary processes happening in the system were Rsp and p by tau p, there was spontaneous emission and uh, p by tau p will represent the loss in the system. The photons were generated because of spontaneous emission, they were getting lost because of the loss in the system. But once spontaneous emission uh, plus this gp, this, this one is sufficient enough to overcome the loss, then what happens? You will start having stimulated emission, right. So, the y axis here this in this plot represents both n and p, there are two plots plotted here one is a photon density and the other one is the carrier density as a function of current. So, initially the number of photons are very low, it is only spontaneous emission that is taking over, but once n corresponding to a threshold jth, so the, the current required to achieve nth is what we are calling as jth. So, once you are reaching the threshold current, all the losses are overcome in the system, right. And once the losses are overcome in the system, the excess carrier density that you are injecting 
is available for stimulated emission and then your GP starts increasing right and so your output photon uh, number starts increasing. Now what happens to the carrier density initially as your as your injection current increases your carrier density increases but just around threshold this this should be around lining up around the same uh, x axis value the carrier density now gets clamped in the system the, the steady state carrier density will get clamped at NTH right and we now calculated what that NTH was and it remains constant in the system. So, what happens to the excess carrier density that you are injecting into the system? It is actually clamped at NTH. So, what happens to the excess? You are continuously increasing J. So, you are continuously increasing N. So, what happens to that? That creates simul stimulated emission and that is what is leading to this uh, linear change. Okay? So, this is what happens inside the system. Now, this JTH obviously going, is going to depend on what is the photon lifetime because um, photon lifetime or loss in the system. Larger the loss in the system, the lifetime is going to be smaller or larger. So, the photons cannot survive in the cavity, the photon lifetime is going to be smaller, right? that is the inverse relation there. Now, the question is uh, we need to find out what exactly the power is because we are interested in finding out how much power is available at the output of the laser. So, we need to calculate the photon density. Once we know the photon density, we multiply it with the uh, H nu that will give us energy and once we have energy, we can find out power. Okay. So, how do you do that now? We want to find out P. So, let us, uh, okay. before that, what is really happening at uh, threshold? Let us say how we want to calculate JTH. What, what, what is the threshold current density required? So, at threshold, again, you use this equation dn by dt is 0, j by qd, j corresponds to jth that is what we want to calculate, n by tau c is nth because that corresponds to nth when at threshold n becomes equal to nth and at threshold we are claiming that there is no stimulated emission. Threshold is a condition where we are just overcoming the losses, the spontaneous emission is sufficient to overcome the losses. So, there is no stimulated emission at threshold. So, at threshold gp is equal to 0 just at threshold. So, if I use this here, I get JTH by QD is NTH by tau C. So, that gives me the threshold current density QD by tau C NTH. So, if I know what my threshold carrier density, I can find out what is the threshold current density. How do I know what is my threshold carrier density? Threshold carrier density is carrier density required for transparency plus 1 over this factor. Now, this factor is telling you actually the something to do with the loss in the system, right. So, there is tau p which is that which contains the mirror loss etcetera. Remember this n naught does not contain the mirror loss. It contains the intrinsic loss of the gain medium itself, right. So, this n naught transparency is only to overcome the loss in the gain medium right alpha in the medium or uh, you know the, the absorption in the medium. But depending on what mirror you are putting, depending on what is your R1 and R2 of your mirror, the tau, tau p will keep changing. So, your NTH is actually a function of uh, what is the reflectivity of the mirror because tau p contains the reflectivity of the mirror. Okay? So, this actually tells you this, this N naught plus this in a way tells you what is the total loss in the system or what is the carrier density corresponding to uh, what is required to overcome the loss in the system. Okay? So, uh, this is how we calculate what is the uh, threshold current, but as I said we are interested to calculate what is the power that is coming out of the system. Now, to find the power which means what happens above threshold, right? we want to calculate what is happening above threshold. For that we have to think what are the processes happening above threshold. What processes happen above threshold? You have injection, you have some spontaneous emission, you have uh, loss in the system and you have stimulated emission. So, you have to now include GP in your calculations. So, 
you go back with uh, going back to the rate equation again. I am just rewriting these rate equations. Again, above threshold also it is steady state. It is no more, we are not doing any modulation here. So, it is still steady state. So, it is still 0. It is just that above threshold this GP is significant. You cannot ignore GP. So, you need to solve these two equations together to find out what is the P. So, how do I solve this together? One immediate way of doing this is you just add these two equations. Both of them have to be satisfied simultaneously. So, if I just add these two equations, what do I get? I get J by Q D minus N by tau C G P cancels plus R S P minus P by tau P equal to 0. I have just added, adding the two rate equations at steady state. So, what does this give me? I can write it as now j by q d is equal to n by tau c minus r s p plus p by tau p. What is the cause and the effect in this equation? You are injecting a certain current. So, j is the input stimulus to the system. As a consequence, you have n and also as a consequence, you have p. Okay? And remember, what is our goal? To find out the photon density. Okay? So, we are going to now claim that since n is clamped at nth, so here I can just substitute instead of n, I can substitute nth. The, the system has only nth in it. The rest of the injected photons or injected electrons are appearing as photons. As far as the carrier density is concerned, it is clamped at nth. So, I can just substitute in terms of n, I can substitute nth. So, this is nth by tau c minus rsp plus p by tau p and just one minute before we wrote what is nth. We wrote nth is jth by qd, nth by tau c is jth by qd here nth by tau c is jth by qd in steady state right because this is the threshold carrier density. So, at that time GP was not 0 and so the clamped value of NTH or the clamped value of the carrier density I know. So, I am basically substituting that value JTH by QD and so I get now I can now solve this to find out what is my photon density. That is what I want to find out. So, my photon density is tau p divided by QD Q d is common here for these two j minus j t h plus tau p r s p. So, do we know all the parameters in this to find out what is a photon density? Do we know uh, tau p? Yes, because that is coming from the loss in the system. So, I can calculate what tau p is. Q of course, I know d I should know which is the thickness of the uh, active medium. j minus j t h I should know. j is the uh, variable. So, I can calculate the photon density at a current j, right? at any current j. So, in this uh, p versus j, I had this equation. Now, we are talking about after threshold, above threshold, this was j t h. So, I know for any value of j, I can now calculate what is the value of p j from this equation. As a small catch here, I know tau p, but do I know R s p? What is R s p actually? Rate of spontaneous emission. What should the rate of spontaneous emission depend on? If you really think, you know that the rate of spontaneous emission is dependent on radiative recombination time, n by radiative recombination time. So, if I know, I need to actually know n, n is n t h it is clamped at nth. So, nth by radiative recombination time. So, strictly speaking this should be nth divided by the radiative recombination time. But what practically happens in the system is the spontaneous emission rate is very low when compared to the stimulated rate. This term 
actually dominates beyond threshold, the rate of spontaneous emission becomes negligibly small when compared to the rate of stimulated emission. Even if it is contributing, this is contributing as a constant. Why is this a constant? Photon lifetime is a constant. In n by tau r, n is actually the threshold inversion and that is a constant. So, this term is actually, con uh, it is a constant term which is contributing to the photon density and the spontaneous emission it turns out to be much smaller, rate of spontaneous emission turns out to be much smaller when you have stimulated emission in the system. All right. So, this is the equation that represents the threshold now and this equation clearly tells that when j is equal to jth just at the threshold, this term first term does not exist, it is only spontaneous emission that exists in the system. And when j less than jth, I mean there is no contribution here because you cannot say that it becomes negative or something, it just means that there is no stimulated emission there, it is only contribution due to the spontaneous emission. And the slope of p versus j actually changes here. So, when j is less than threshold, you have Rsp which was n divided by tau radiative. So, when it is less than threshold, the population is increasing, but at threshold it gets clamped at Nth by tau r and greater than threshold this term becomes negligibly small, all right. Uh, but this is only photon density and what we should be interested is not just photon density, we should be interested in power.